Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by ExcelLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to copy and paste a range of cells from one sheet to another and preserve their row and column sizes. Now we're going to talk about it for the beginners first using the entire sheet. And then for the developers, we're going to do a little VBA and I'm going to show you how to do this with just a part of the sheet, which is really cool. So here we go. Today's question comes from John in Graham, Washington, one of my Platinum members. John says, I need to copy data from one Excel sheet to another. On the source sheet, I've set the row heights and the column widths the way I want. But when I copy the data to a new sheet, those sizes don't carry over. Is there a way to copy and paste data in Excel while keeping both the row heights and column widths? It works if I copy the entire sheet, but sometimes I only want part of it. All right, let's see an example. All right, here I've got a sample spreadsheet set up with some customers, right? Customer ID, first name, last name, and some notes. The notes, I've got these rows and columns set exactly the way I want. Some of the notes are really long, as you can see here for Jean-Luc, right? But I only wanna see the first five rows. Okay, so that, this is the exact heights and widths that I want this stuff to be. Now, how do I copy and paste this over onto sheet two? Well, if I select the cells like this, and then Control C, copy, Come over to sheet two, and then I'll hit paste. And it comes in like that. All right, the row heights are all messed up. The column widths are all uniform. Oh, I don't like that at all. All right, undo, control Z. All right, back to sheet one. Let's try selecting just the rows. Come over here, I'll click on the row headers, one through seven, copy, control C. Come back over to here, sheet two, and then I'll click on A1 and paste. And okay, all right, I got the row heights, but I didn't get the column widths. So that's not good, undo. How about if we try copying the columns? Let's select the columns, A through D, Control C. Now I've got the columns selected. Come over to sheet two, and let's paste those in. Okay, now I got the column widths, but the, I didn't get the row heights. It's trying to fit everything from each one. And as you can see here, Jean-Luc's really big. I don't want all that. I just want the first five rows of text. All right, undo that. So is there a way I can select the row heights and the column widths? Well, if we click right there where the headers meet, the row header and the column header, and then copy, control C. Now I've got the whole sheet selected. Now I can come over to two and then paste. And there we go and it copied the row heights and the column widths from sheet one. Okay, now, if that's all you wanna do, if that's all you wanna do is make an exact copy of the sheet, all you have to do is right click and pick move or copy, right? That'll make a copy of the entire sheet. So, what if what you really wanna do is instead of copying the entire sheet, you only want a piece of it. Let's say you only want Deanna Troy and Jean-Luc Picard. All right, if I copy those and come over here and paste them again, I don't get the dimensions right. So let's undo that. So if what you really want is to get both dimensions, but only on parts of the sheet, you're gonna need a little VBA. Now, if you've never done any Excel VBA programming before, pause the video now, go watch this other video. It's free, it's on my website, it's on my YouTube channel. It's less than 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started programming in Excel VBA. All right, so go watch that and then come on back. All right, so we're gonna need a little code. I'm gonna go up to my developer tab. If you don't know where the developer tab is, you didn't watch the other video, did you? All right, I'm gonna click on Visual Basic. We're gonna insert a new module. So just come over here in this pane over here, this Project Explorer pane, right click, insert module. That'll create a brand new module for us. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and make you watch me type all this code in, all right? I'm just gonna show you the code and then we'll go over it. Now the code is in the code vault on my website. If you're a gold member, you can come in here and just click the copy button and it'll copy it to your clipboard. Everybody else, if you're not a gold member, well, get to typing. There it is, there's a screenshot. Take a shot of it now. I'll scroll down in a second so you can get the rest of it. Okay, there it is right there. Not too much, not a ton of code. All right, another reason to join, become a gold member. All right, so I'm just gonna paste that in here. There it is. And I think we got, yep, two option explicits. Okay, now I've got two subroutines that I created. One is called copy selected, 
and the other one is called paste selected. Now copy selected is pretty straightforward. It copies the selected range and what worksheet you're on. So it's, it sets a variable called source range equal to selection. Selection means whatever you've got selected in the sheet. That's a special keyword called selection. Okay, now source range and source worksheet are up here. They're outside of these subroutines. That means they're global variables. So that way both of these subroutines can work with these variables here. Okay, well, they're, they're global as far as this module is concerned. They're module level variables, okay? So we're gonna set the source range equal to the selection. The source worksheet is the source range dot worksheet. In other words, the worksheet that you're on. This is important later. Okay, so that's how we copy that information. Now, when we go to paste it, the first thing we're going to do is make sure we've got a source range and a source worksheet. So if the source range is nothing, in other words, there's nothing in there, or the source worksheet is nothing, give the user a message and say, hey, you didn't copy anything, use copy first, and then exit out of town. Okay, now we're going to set a couple more variables. The destination cell is going to be the active cell. Active cell means where the, where the selected cell currently is, wherever you're sitting, where you want to paste it, right? And the destination worksheet is the destination cells worksheet. So whatever worksheet you're on, okay? Then we're gonna use source range dot copy destination cell. The copy property here, the copy method, I should call it, you can use it to copy data to a destination. The destination is destination cell. So source range that we set up here, okay, is going to be copied to destination cell. Now that just copies the data without any formatting. Now that we've got that data there, now we're gonna set the column widths and the row heights. We're gonna loop through all of the columns, right? L is a new variable. It's gonna be from one to source range dot columns dot count. That means how many columns are in that source range, right? How many columns are in here? One, two, three, four. So that's gonna loop from one to four. And it's gonna say destination worksheets columns and then what column we're on, dot column width equals the column width from the same cell in the, or from the same column in the source range, right? And then we'll do the same thing with the rows. For L equals one, two, source range rows count. Go down each row and set the heights accordingly. Okay, makes sense. That's how this code works in a nutshell. All right, let's give it a save, control S. Now it's gonna say, the following features cannot be saved in a macro free workbook, VB project, okay? Now, once you put a module in your project, you have to save it as an XLSM file, right? So it knows it's got a module or macro, whatever you wanna call it. So save this. So now we're gonna come back out here. We're gonna file, save as, and we're gonna save this as an XLSM macro enabled workbook. All right, save it. Okay, now, just having that code in there doesn't do much. We need to assign those macros, those VBA code subs, those subroutines. We need to assign those to keyboard shortcuts. I'm going to use uh, Control Shift C and Control Shift P for paste. I know V is normally paste, but I've got something else on my system that I record with set to Control Shift V. So you can use V if you want to. I'm going to use P. That's just me. So how do you do that? Well, we're going to go to macros. And in the macro window, you can see there's our two little subroutines we just created. Copy selected. I'm going to go to options. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to hit shift C. That's going to make my macro key control shift C. Hit OK. And then for paste, I'm going to go options. And I'm going to go shift P for mine. You can make it V if you want to. All right. Now those are both set. Okay. Now I can close the macro window. Now I can select, you can select the rows just like this way. They select the range just normally. All right, control shift C. Now I got a program with a beep in there. You heard the beep. Now I can go to a new sheet if I want to. I can click over here and go control shift P. Look at that. It pasted it in right at that spot and preserved all of the heights and widths in that section. Now the one downside is when you're using VBA code, there's no undo. You cannot control Z and undo that. Okay, sorry. But we can just go to a new sheet. <laughs> Let's go to sheet one. 
Let's say I want just Deanna and Picard. Control Shift C. Go to sheet three. And I'm going to put it right there. Control Shift P. Boom. There it is. And it preserved the row heights and widths because it copied it. And it, it copied the cells and then it written and set the row columns and, and the, the row and column sizes with those loops. And the nice thing about this too is if you open up a new book, let's go to file and then open up a new blank book. As long as you're in the same instance of Excel, how do you know if you're in the same instance? Well, if you go to view and then look for, where's the window thing? Switch windows. If you see them both in here, or right, here's my book five and there's the customer samples, that means you're in the same instance of Excel. You can copy and paste and do stuff between these. So I can come over here. I can say, give me Riker and Malcolm Reynolds, control shift C, come over to this book and then control shift P and there they are, All right? As long as you're in the same instance of Excel. Remember Excel used to have that multiple document interface. If you're old like me, it used to have a two sets of maximize, minimize and close buttons. Well, they don't do that anymore. They just open up a new windows, but it's still the same instance of Excel. Okay. So there you go, that's how you do it. There's both the beginner and the developer ways to copy and paste a sheet or a range and keep the row and column settings, sizes, whatever you wanna call them. <laughs> but that's gonna do it. That's your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. I'm excited to announce that I'm creating a brand new series of lessons focused on programming in Microsoft Excel VBA. If you've been looking to take your Excel skills to the next level and learn how to automate tasks, write custom macros, and unleash the full power of Excel VBA, these lessons are for you. Sign up now on my website at the link shown. You'll find a copy in the description down below the video window, and I'll send you more information on this exciting new series. If you'd like to see me make more Excel tech help videos, post a comment down below and say, I want more Excel. The vast majority of my videos are from Microsoft Access, the database program, because that's been my forte for the past three decades or so. However, I love Excel and I'm more than happy to make more videos for Excel and Word and PowerPoint and all the other topics that I teach. As you know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, so make your voice heard and let me know you want more Excel videos. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you have down below. I do my best to read them all as soon as I can. And also, be sure to share this video with that person in the office that always asks you Excel questions. Or, you know, that family member, mom, when she calls you and says, hey, I can't do this. Well, send her a copy of one of my videos. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Just click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when I post new videos. If you'd like to become a member of my channel, click the join button down below and you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos and one free beginner lesson every month. Gold members get access to download all the sample spreadsheets that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use and a free expert level Excel course once a month after finishing the beginner lessons. And platinum members get access to all of the previous perks plus all of my full beginner courses and one new developer course every month after finishing the expert levels. If you're watching this video on YouTube and you're looking for the links, click where it says show more down below the video window. YouTube actually does a pretty good job of hiding this thing. You'll see a list of other related videos, other information on the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when I post new videos, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Excel level one course, check it out now. It's absolutely free. It's over 90 minutes long and it covers all the basics of Microsoft Excel. And like I said before, even if you don't need it, I'm sure you know someone that does. That person that always is asking you Excel questions, well, send them this link. And if you like level one, level two is just a dollar and it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. And if you like those, come to my website and I've got tons more lessons for all levels. I cover everything from the basics all the way up to advanced functions and more. And while you're on my website, stop by the Excel forum, post any questions you have and join in the conversation. As always, thanks for learning with ExcelLearningZone.com. I'm Richard Rost. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.